Sandwich, she win you. <laughs> VP, I thought we were friends and we're together. That is not a first time. <laughs> but it is true. If this woman stands today for governorship of Imo State, she'll win. She's loved by her people. But our culture, we have to ask her to do more. But what is important this afternoon, as I was speaking yesterday, I said that my wife that became a wonderful woman is perhaps is judged from my own side of negativity. And a good woman and a good wife is that woman who closes her eyes to the bad doings of her husband. Is that woman who can open her kitchen even when it is painful to do so. Is the woman who will tolerate her in-laws when they want to pretend the fact that, the, that her husband is their own and she will let go. So I found out that every nice woman has a degree of foolishness in her, of not counting her rights and what she stands for. And that is the only way we Africans can judge a wonderful woman, a woman who does not talk about her right, but talk about peace. This is the woman that you have today that is my wife. So, and again, I found out, Mr. Vice President, that while we're here, you can easily separate who is APC and who is PDP. Even the chairman of the question re-emphasized this fact. Please pardon this my dress. I bought it new for my wife. <laughs> but surprisingly, surprisingly, these women of ours have come together irrespective of the party. So if we want the true unity in Nigeria, Mr. Vice President, Let's give more powers to the women of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Even when Fayoshe is abusing me, and I'm abusing Erufai, and Ngige is firing me from one side, these our wives are still talking together as if nothing is happening. This is highly commendable. I want to thank you. We are proud of you people, and I want to thank you for coming around to support my lovely wife. I leave you with this word, and this is all I could say about this young lady who 28, 29 years ago, when I saw her the first time, stars came out of my eyes. I was dazzled in her beauty, and I could hardly control my breath. And that was why I rushed into marriage within seven days. She was too beautiful. She was too beautiful for my liking. And uh, I, I didn't believe that I was qualified to have her, especially at that time that I was nobody. So every success of Rochester today, this woman played a part in it. That is why today I wonder who is that woman or that lady who will now confuse me against this woman. <laughs> Please tell them I'm not available. <laughs> my VP, my VP. And if anybody wants to talk to me, you should go and see the vice president first before you can reach. <laughs> and that love we have kept on. I thought children would separate our love. But don't mind what my children have said. When two of us meet, those children don't count. And sometimes we lock ourselves in the door and tell them, get out. Go and look for your own home. So let them not deceive you people about my relationship with my wife. For what God has done together, let no man put. Not even my children should put asunder. For the father allowed them to have a bit of her goodies and they spoiled the shape of my wife. 
this woman that used to be like, now these children have devastated my wife. And rather than apologizing to me, they are even adding more insult to the injury. <laughs> my people, my people. I want to therefore, at this point, please invite, because it is not common in our checkered history to see both a president and vice attend one particular function. Let me share this with you, my, my VP. At the last meeting, I met President, President Buhari, and I said to my president, my president, I hope you have not forgotten that my wife's birthday is on the 1st of December. I was shocked that the president took it back a bit. He said, when? I said, this Friday. He said, oh, I'm traveling. I would have loved to be here. But he asked me, who do you think that, uh, that will come and do make up for me? And I said, let me think. So I stayed one minute, and I said, send your SGF. Because since the appointment of this SGF, it has been a good bridge between the politicians, the party, and the presidency. I said, let him come. So we remain indebted to President Mohammed Buhari for what he represents in this nation and what he represents in my family and the words of encouragement that he has always given to this family. At this point, I want to kindly request the boss, natural boss, but you are not my boss. My boss is President Mohammed Buhari, and that's the only woman I respect. But since your name is synonymous with boss, come and boss us, but present the message of Mr. President. Your Excellency, President of Federal Republic of Nigeria, here represented by Secretary of Government, to please deliver his uh, goodwill message. God bless you. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Emil Sibanjo, SAN, GCON, the Chairman of the Occasion, the Representative of the First Lady, the wife of the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, Your Excellencies, our host governor and his wonderful and beautiful wife, the governors of Bayelsa and I think it's Abia. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me stand on existing protocol. Your Excellency, Mrs. Rochas Okorocha, I would present a more elaborate address of the Mr. President to you at the dinner this evening. But suffice it to say that I am new at this job. I'm just a month old because I was sworn in as the Secretary to the Government of the Federation on the 1st of November 2017. So in some way, we share the birthday with you because I'm just one month old. When I assumed duty as the Secretary to the Government, I said something that, was, that is akin to the title of your book. My life is grace. When I reported in my office and the lady that had acted as the secretary to the government was handing over to me, and in my response, I did allude to the fact that I do not come to this office as the secretary to the government of the Federation because of any special skill of mine. 
I come to that 